Turns out the five randoms do need all five games and players, that is, as they drop map number four on Shattered Desert. Gourmizer, it it is a touch unfortunate what yeah. happens there. Es especially, I mean, it, it's never good, especially at this level of play with, with what happened, but especially when it's it's not only Ninu, but in that role, that flank presence is, is so important. In that role, on that map, with yes. how he's been playing all day, like, that is pretty much the worst case scenario of people to go missing for you. So we'll just ignore his slash line and said, look at Nepo, yep. who is 14 and Agreed. six. It was pretty good from him. I think Adam was doing a lot towards the end. And one of the things that Kresnik had mentioned, but really it comes down to the, the guillotine, the spite that comes through with that. You're already down Ninu. Now you're down Exentra and Zarini. All of a sudden it becomes a lot easier for Chroma Space to control the rest of that fight. And, and I, I agree with what Kresnik was talking about as well. And when, when we look at Nepo and sort of how he's been performing throughout this set, I mean, you look at the lineup that is the five randoms and, and you know there is some name recognition for chroma space yeah but the fact that this one's going to a game five that's got to be a huge boost to the confidence not only a huge boost to the confidence but i think it's a, another eye opener that what the reason i've been saying it there's six spots in europe these guys are playing to go to a group stage right now right to then play in those two groups to try and be the top three to be in six spots that right. you can go forward with there's going to be 12 teams that are doing it and this is that example of, man, anybody is in it. Chroma Space is one that can never be counted out. The same thing, you know, with a team like Five Randoms, those names, D69 that we saw last week. And I can guarantee at least three teams that we're going to see. Well, I guess we only see two teams next week. But right. three teams that make it into the semis next week will be vying for those spots just as much. There's so much, much competition here in Europe specifically. That's right. That it's it's just insane. Yeah, it's a long road. I mean, you you win these finals, you move yourself to the groups. You're just chilling for a couple. So weeks. so much to go after that to fully make it in the PPC picks and bans for the final game of the EU finals here in week two of qualifiers. It is Serpent Beach, Gormizer. I wanted to bring up Vivian not only because we talked about Nepo. We've seen Vivian, I think, so much throughout this set. She's obviously important. But how important? I mean, is there, is there a point where you start to take her earlier in the draft because of her damage potential? Or do you look at maybe what Ninu was able to do while he was in that game? He was doing a pretty you good job of mitigating that Vivian throughout the first two points. So is she, she effectively counterable in the right circumstances? She's counterable in the right circumstances. Like, I think that's really realistically where she needs to go is like, Time she's to going to be very soft. Enemy. We've seen that. I'll if she gets impressed. picked up, you know whoever's playing her is going to make her look yep. good. I think if you're five randoms, your best bet is actually maybe get that for Spunky, grab something else more flank oriented. I mean, this is Servant Beach. Eevee works well here. You want to roll it back. You can go back to the buck that we saw earlier. Neil. Those can all work around just because their mobility Mave as well is very big on this one. But get something that can get to a Vivian pretty fast. And all of a sudden, it's much easier it's to keep nice her locked down. I feel like, yeah, especially with the way they've drafted now, it's dangerous if you're Chroma Space to go to it. Yeah, and with Ruckus and Khan, Gore, those continue to be very highly prioritized picks here. We weren't sure coming into these first few weeks how the meta was going to shift and change and who was going to be high, who was going to be low. Uh, this has been the day of the Ruckus, apparently. Yeah, and, and you know what? Again, I'm never going to be against it. People in Europe, What's now play Ruckus. Just do it in a much more palatable way i guess sure. the way to, like it's just fun to watch it's fun to to see what they're able to accomplish and i think it's just because he's always what been big here there's a period of time where he kind of fell out of the meta running. but i think chroma space again they're more than likely going to throw it on the choreal here yeah. and i like that and i love the way that they play but even if it's ovim we've seen how aggressive um, he could be in that rom game Jerry earlier i like the way that he plays in these styles of team Oh, final pick here for Chroma Space is the Knessa. We finally get a taste of some sniper in this set. Yeah. Do you like Knessa and where she's at? I like Knessa. I like where she's at. I'm still on the fence about snipers on this map. Strix used to be huge here, but it's just a very big commit to a range fight that yep. isn't always going to be in your favor for range, but you have the Eevee to help offset that. Chroma Space are relying very heavily on the duo for their damage, whereas five randoms, each one can do it individually. Well, no matter what, this is where this one ends. Five randoms, Chroma Space, one final time. Finch, it's all yours. Well, we have gone the full distance, just as Dolson alluded to there, between five randoms and Chroma Space so far, and they will settle the skirmish on Serpent Beach. I do believe for this one, they were able to get Ninu back here for them in this game. So five randoms should be right back in it after an unfortunate 
lost with him last game, and you can see him there piloting the Maeve. Did you like that breakdown for them on the desk? Are you seeing it that same way coming into this match here, Kresnik? I think so. I think they are going to be relying on the duo a little bit, but I think they can kind of get a carry potential game from Nepo as well. I think Nepo can kind of single-handedly do sure. it. Especially looking at the other side, because Makoa, with Nepo running Eagle Eye, the bonus damage on headshots, Makoa is like 50% head. I mean, he, he is very <laughs> easy to, to, to kind of chunk with those headshots. And Maeve as a flanker has to peak sight lines a lot. Nepo's going to be able to get away with, I think, a lot of free fire on him, and it's going to be about how well they can counter poke the Knessa and let Ninu get in unpressured, I think, to find the kill. Right, we've seen a lot of times where really the question is just how much HP do you have to trade on the way in so often if you are going to try and make that dive play happen. We'll see if they are able to get back there towards Nepo on the Knessa. So far it is Chroma Space that touch first building up a nice little bit of a percent bank. They've got the Terminus who can't step in because he's worried he'll take all these shots from the Knessa. That's the pressure afforded to you when you pick this long-range sniper. So far, though, still without a first blood as Chroma Space did to go positioning. Now it's five randoms in control of the point. Surprise for five randoms just kind of peeking into this sniper so so constantly, but <laughs> they just want to get that damage, and they've kind of avoided a lot of damage so far. Grover able to keep everyone topped off, but Zarini gets gripped into the side and stunned. Yeah, and it's Grover who's low in the back, but it's McCole who falls first. Boca not too far behind, though. Nepa, Nepa and Ovum do find two big kills, so Chroma Space feeling good about it. Make it a third as Ninu falls as well. They gave up about 63%. But if it's for a full wipe, I think you're all right with a chroma space and move into control. Really tough for them, I think, to get a retouch, too. They're going to have to send the Maven, but that's not guaranteed. There's ways to stop it, especially with Chroma Space having that con grip. Catch the Maven on the way in if she has to go low because of your sniper, and you've just got a free pick, and five randoms have to struggle to touch. They struggle to touch, but they do manage to make one half as they make it to the overtime. But Exentra and Zarini basically throwing their lives away for a desperate attempt. Ninu falls, so does Spunky as well. And Chroma Space will indeed cap the first objective. Great control there, I think, by them. Having both of their DPSs have vertical mobility on this map that is so high ground centric, so important to keep that control, that it gives them a lot more options to push. We'll say. Don't really want your set to send your Knesset to point blank range, but <laughs> don't even need that high ground if you just poke down Ninu. Yeah, Ova been able to bring Maeve back in and find a nice kill. Now he's in trouble up top, but gets decent healing out from Ying, said he can stay alive. Now right in the thick of it, and is able to stand tall against all this pressure coming out from five randos. In fact, pushing them back. Bulka removed too. Spunky does get a pretty critical kill onto Adam. That Eevee was so much of the damage, but Kirill finds Exentra. The front line now shredded through, and Chroma Space can keep right on pushing. Ovim's doing such a great job of staying alive. He was so low, but the combination of the Illusory Rift and the Life Exchange Burst Heal was just enough to keep him going. And they just didn't have enough damage up top. It was all tanks, and they couldn't burn through that healing. All right, and able to maintain that positioning rather strong for Chroma Space was that con last find. Kirill's done a great job of it as well, and they've so far just run right on through. The Hexafire comes out. That does remove Zarini, making a double kill. He gets bulk as well. Spunky falls too, and Chroma Space successful push, starting to run over five randoms. Okay, I understand that there was a lot of people in main, but there's no way that was the safest place for Bulka to be, right? There's no way that directly next to a Hexafire and Ruckus <laughs> could have possibly been the safest place he had to stand. I'm glad that was the replay, though, because I did want to talk about Adium. He's not finding a ton of kills, barring those two he got at the start, but he was in a good position just pinching them from the side and not in a place that can be focused. You can see they're having a hard time finding a kill on the side of five randoms. The tanks 7-0 and on Ovim, 5-0 and on Coriol, yeah. just withstanding so much pressure and, and finding all the, clean up on all the damage from everyone else. Yeah, we saw it from Ovum on that high ground, right, where they could not bring him down. We saw it a bit on those damage numbers, too. I mean, aside from Spunky on this Leon, it was almost all Chroma Space after that, just to give you an idea of how evenly their damage is spread out in these fights. Chroma Space doing so well here so far. We'll see, though, if five randoms can show us some adjustments here on this next point fight where they'll have an advantage. But so far, it's most much of the same. Ovum takes care of Zarini early on. Boca, though, does take Nepo out. He's a lot of that long-range damage for them. Perhaps that the opening five randoms needed. It could be. Ovim stuck on the point, though, and maybe he could have waited just a little bit. There was no cap time, but he throws himself on. They forced the whirlwind out, so that might be enough for five randoms to stay in control. Yeah, Ovum falls out this time. So does Nebula. Finally, the wall that was those front lines comes crumbling down. Nino, or Nino rather, with a multi-kill that fight at five randoms right back in it. What went so well for them this time? They just didn't focus Nino. I think he was on the side, staying alive a lot of the time, getting that poke, and that was a big deal. He had to show up. He was below the tanks in damage, and he managed 
managed to find the hole that he was looking for. And that time able to come through much better. Zarini does find one pull, try and give him off. They don't actually give up the full point. It's in overtime, so that means that Chroma Space could try and make their way in, but they lose Kirill. Nepo and Adam, though, do find two pretty critical kills. Now Zarini starting to drop as well. I think that Chroma Space are right back into it, pushing five randoms off the point. Now they're the ones looking to hopefully get a cap. Nepo perfectly positioned in main. Everyone panicked and dove on the objective, and Nepo just free fired. Then Ninu maybe didn't need to be there. Should have been in the back, keeping Nepo from firing like that. But their tanks just get bursted down, and they're going to have to find a way in. But Ovim is on the point with the stun grip. He's going to stop whoever the first person to go in is. It looks like it's going to be this Terminus trying to force his way in. He makes it, and that buys time for Ninu to get to the back line and shut down Adam perfectly. Overtime starting to tick, but now it's a double kill. This Mave running unchecked. A triple kill for Ninu. Turns out he's much better when he's here himself, a quadra, as Ninu starts to run through Chroma. No, actually, Finch, this is bot Ninu. You should see real Ninu. <laughs> this oh. is bot Ninu, exactly. <laughs> no, Much but... better when he's here playing. No, but you're right. Obviously, the real Ninu certainly playing quite well when he's here for the boys. Gets their first cap, and now five randoms can start, or rather, five randoms can move to the back. Yeah, so much verticality lets you pick and choose all your fights. When you're in the right place, it is noticeable with all the damage and cleanup he was able to do from the back line. Chroma Space, though, is getting some pretty critical kills here on this push to try and delay five randoms. And that'll be on the rest of the boys getting right to the back line. Zarini ends up falling, too. I said that they got some critical kills, and they continue to come through. That's Exentra falling as well. So a nice defense here to buy some time for Chroma Space, but five randoms got plenty of opportunities to knock at the door. I'm, I'm expecting a 3-1 from Chroma here just because of how hard it is to push this point. I, as someone who's played support and, and tanks and scrims a lot on yeah. this map, you're just on the ground, and they're all above you. They can pick any <laughs> fight they want. It's very tough, but this Midnight Maven Terminus up top is the initiation five randoms want. Yeah, they try and find their way in to see if they can get to the back line. They have forced a good bit of that high ground positioning to be given up, though Adam still has the positioning that he wants up there for that EV. They start to fall back a bit more, though, as I think that, as you said, that Midnight allowed them to move in and try and break this open a little bit more. Ninu, finding the shots they need, cannot quite shut down this ruckus, gets up to the top, though, and finally does finish off the job. A double kill as Ninu comes alive in this second fight. You know they're not expecting Terminus to be where he is when he melee kills a sniper in the back line, and they managed to keep control of this objective. Just Nepo alive, and these tanks are on... Decently long respawns, at least Ovim is, and he's the one you want contesting the objective. They're gonna have to throw their Ruckus away, but looks like they're actually holding off. It looks like they're not gonna try and move in, willing to commit the Leon ultimate here to shut down Kirill, and that does end up panning out for them. They get the successful push. But as you said, man, once Nina was able to get in and buy a little bit of space, did you saw how it opened up the map so much for the rest of this team. When Nepo can't free fire, there's there's kind of the crux of their composition. It I, is. Adium can do what he can, but Eevee doesn't have 2,000 burst in an instant like Knessa does, especially from the distance that Nepo can do it at. So I think great for Ninu to finally swap his priority later in the fight. Small misstep in the middle of the fight was what let them get that retake kind of in spite of it all, but they did manage to get Ninu onto that back line again. And I think Chroma Space maybe need to play a little more careful with their peel. I think they might need to keep Ovim back, play a little more off the objective and try to keep the flankers off of their back line. And what was working so well for Chroma Space that first time was that that front line felt almost oh, impenetrable, yeah. didn't it? And, and, and on those first two, on that first cap and then resulting push, we'll see if they can get that same result this time. But Eevee already under some duress ends up catching out the Mave, and Mave sends her pack and Spunky fall. So does Zarini though. So Chroma Space with the 2 0 to start things off, make it 3 0 as Nepo gets one as well. And this time the Knessa able to snipe quite comfortably. They're looking a lot better here. A lot better here. This is a very hard game for Zarini. I just want to mention that because he has to push into a Ruckus and potentially a Knessa and an Eevee on the side, and he doesn't really have perfect follow-up because Ninu has to be somewhere else, so Zarini maybe pushing a little bit too far. It's just too hard for him to survive if he's trying to take the all-important high ground on their side. Remember, we are still at 2-2 as the Hexafire comes out point blank. Very spunky, no way he's getting out of that one. Can't quite fully take care of the Makoa, but Exentra does end up falling. Thanks a little bit of backup damage there from Adam. Gets to the back line. Let's shut down Ninu as well. Chroma Space starting to come through in a big way here so far. Adam managed to get back there to bulk a double kill now for Kareel as they shred right through five randoms. Chroma Space should be able to cap this one pretty easy now. The verticality of Ruckus too. I didn't talk about it at first, but he's just everywhere he needs to be. He went from ulting on their high ground to his own team's high ground on the opposite side of the of the mid fight. It's so many options and 
you played enough, you can choose the option. It's just the best character to have. He's in the middle of their team now, and he might just get away. It was what he was able to do last time so well, too, and he doesn't quite get the retreat off this time. Exentra is right there to get the shutdown kill. Boca comes in for them as well. The last bit of damage necessary to remove Ovim this time. So this should be a bit of a stall out now for five randoms they desperately needed. I know last time you felt like the defense was pretty likely. You feel the same way here? I, I, I do. I was surprised that they turned it, but they just weren't expecting Terminus to get on high ground. And right. Nepo down, that might get them some ground open, but look how far back they're being pressured. These tanks are so aggressive. And Ninu finally able to start getting his free range that worked so well for them before. Is going to delay the kill onto this Khan, who's just kind of buying time at this point. But this is exactly what you were asking for, right? Five randoms getting to the back line and slowing down this push from Chroma Space. They don't even need that high ground that's so strong for them later on. They retook it. They managed to hold it because they kept them off of Nepo. Khan just bought time, and Nepo's like, yeah, hold on, I'm lining up. He's texting on one hand, aiming with the other. Managed to get the kill eventually onto him, and they actually managed to retake off of what looks like a very desperate push back to their own spawn. It did seem as though it might not be easy, so now Chroma Space have the payload pushed up, and as you said, it forced them off some of that high ground positioning, but the Ruck is still up there, though. Yeah, it could be a potentially be. problem, so we'll see if that's going to be enough here for them. Midnight comes out to try and shut them down, but right into the back line they go. Catching out Spunky quite easily. Ovum was the one that was there. Another shot out to find Ninu way in the back. Nebula helps out for that one too. Chroma Space starting to look so much better here on this final map. I know that they kind of get here a little bit of help from that disconnect from Ninu, but they're looking really strong right now. Yeah, they just punished how out of sync Five Random was in that push. Spunky was way ahead of everybody, and you can't let your Leon do that. Even with the Enlightenment, it's not enough to stay alive, but Ninu wants to keep this defense alive. Coral. Flips it on its head. Shuts him down as well. That means just one left up to try and stop this push on the side of five randoms. They're not going to make it there in time. Chroma Space able to grab the victory for two and claim the set as well. Your tanks, if the card's that close, your tanks have to be the first ones to go down, I think. If it's getting near that corner, you want your tanks respawning if the fight looks bad. And Got to say, Chroma Space, they, I think they focused the right targets on that yeah, push. Five very randoms, impressed. Five randoms tried to go a little bit aggressive, but Spunky and Nina were just a little bit too ahead of the pack. They really were, man. I mean, this is such an impressive game, I would say, because for, first for five randos, because what happened to them on map four was pretty tough. They rebounded, I think, in a pretty good way and put up a really strong fight here. But uh, clearly, Chroma Space were never willing to count themselves out just because it was a matchup or maybe they weren't favored in terms of experience. Really impressive from them. Yeah, I think so. Chroma Space, like we said before, Ovim takes these unproven players and trains he them does. up to be really good. And you can see here, I guess, winning the Bright Marsh they always win was all they needed to flip the <laughs> momentum of the game. That's right, they're on that Bright Marsh map. It felt like that one was, was on the brink too, and no way they could pull it back, but getting another win here this time. And I think this Chroma Space team does have a core they can really rely on. Oh, Obviously, yeah. Nepo is impressing me, but Ovum, I think, with some of his frontline work, looked really strong here as well. Clearly, Adam has a flexible champion pool oh, yeah. that he can pull from as well, and looked really strong too. This Chroma Space team might be the real deal. Yeah, I think so. I mean, Ovum was on Penn last season, the team that did come in and upset all the PPL teams in the midseason Invitational. He didn't end up going to land, but he looked as good as the main tank who subbed for him on the other side, Excentra, right. all season. So not surprising to see Ovin performing. I gotta say, I'm happy to see this, this team from what is the CIS region, not usually seen doing that well, just performing excellent against these X top players. This really is it really is a strong performance for them absolutely on, on the side here of Chroma Space. We talked a little bit about the the, the composition and how they might be a yeah. little bit too reliant on some of Nepo's damage, but I think as that game kind of fleshed out, we found out that red really wasn't the case. It was a bit more multifaceted than we thought. It was because they just kept slowing down the tanks. The tanks on five randoms couldn't really do much of anything. Zarini and Exentra kind of limited in the pressure they could take because if they push a lane too far, they're looking at a sniper, they're surrounded by Adium, and they were just able to stay alive and protected enough to not let those tanks get away with anything. Zarini really struggled on that right side. You're right, Zarini had a bit of a hard time in that last game. That is good into it for us, at least in Europe, but do not worry, there's two more regions left. Brazil first and North America to close it out. Plenty more PPC qualifiers coming at you.